Hello everyone, Crystal Fisher here, and welcome to a new Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy video. Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Um, what? Today, you can see, we are here, well, I mean, I wish I was here, but um, we got IGN and a couple other providers playing a new level. A new level in uh, in Crash Bandicoot, uh, uh, basically in Crash Bandicoot Warped. It's a new level in yeah in the Insane Trilogy. It takes place like you can basically it's set on the portal there. It said level it said level 31. So it's basically like a sort of a secret level, sort of a secret final level. It's called Future Tense. Now this is a live commentary. This is me actually looking at it for the first time. I was doing the Spyro stream, failed stream in the morning, and so now this is actually my first response, like first sort of look at this. And wow. Like it, oh, it's like it's different. I mean, it's different because it's got like the different, um, different time of day. It's like it's a, it's a future level, but during the day or not like sunset or whatever. And very interestingly enough, in the press release, they literally reference this bit, bit here. You see this bit? That is meant to be a reference to the cut waterfall level in Crash One. Now that I, I am, I am genuinely like, you have no idea. How excited that makes me that Vicarious Visions actually um, give a crap about the, the history of the series. Because, I mean, to be honest, the thing is, now I've got that footage there, and we're going to go through it again, then we're going to analyze a bit more deeply. This is from Shaq News. Um, what, what, what makes this all so amazing is that the whole waterfall thing is probably known by overall, probably less than a million Crash fans overall, realistically. You know, it's not a super popular thing. It was one of the later things found. It was actually found, I believe, after Stormy Ascent. Um, there was like basically three cut levels. There's like a cavern level, which to this day, I remember referencing it in an old video. I always wanted them to include it as bonus content. And this is not obviously including the waterfall level, but I mean, to be honest, it's almost better because the waterfall level actually wasn't, um, like it wasn't, it wasn't really finished. None of those levels were finished, like the same with the cavern one and such. So looking at this, so I'm burping in the middle of the video and I'm not even uh, cutting it out because who cares. Um, looking at this, basically what they've done is, yeah, they've taken the future future theme, changed the time of day. Uh, apparently it's going to be quite difficult, but more importantly, really, what this comes down to, and obviously this, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be in every version of the game, by the way. And so are some updates are going to be in every version of the game that was talked about in an interview recently. I saw that they're, they're basically, they've, they've actually cut down on loading times and stuff like that. To me, this, this confirms one thing, one pretty critical thing. Looking at this gameplay live now, you know, it's not like, it's not like crash level design is the most impossible thing, but looking at this, looking at the elements they've included and stuff, it gives me 100% faith that we absolutely need to see more Crash Bandicoot games developed by Vicarious Visions. They clearly understand what to do here. They're, they're using new elements, they're using old elements. I love the things flying around in the sky. Um, they're changing the time of day, which is also uh, such an easy thing to make an environment look completely different while still using the same textures. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why I kind of always preferred Spyro because there was very little like borrowing of textures and stuff. But with Crash, it's okay if you ask me because the level design is more inherently simple and it's more path based. I'm okay with that. Oh, 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 what the hell is this? No, oh my god, that is a brilliant little secret area. That is freaking awesome. This whole thing is just fantastic. This, I mean, I am like, okay, I'm, I'm really glad I actually didn't look at this footage before just commentating live because this is just fan freaking tastic, man. This is just excellent. Maybe I have to put reaction in the title there for the old clickbaiters. Now this guy is not uh, not doing big enough jumps. He's not doing slight enough slide jumps this week, mate. Slide jump it, buddy. Come on, come on, come on, Shack News. Oh no, he's gonna get game over, isn't he? Or maybe, maybe this is where he starts taking it seriously. But yeah, honestly, this is such a positive thing for the series. Seeing new content. This is this is the first piece of, you know, let's be honest, basically new Crash Bandicoot content in almost a decade. Like, as in actual, a new level with new, new assets and new, um, you know, new designs. You know, new, yeah, it, it's not a copy. It's not a copy, basically, and that is just fantastic. Now, please slide jump over there. Please do it. Okay, he's, he's going for the... He's going for the jump. He just he doesn't know how to... Slide. He's game over. He's, he's game over. Yeah, that's that's what we've come to. It's another, it's another boss man. No, just kidding. I'm just kidding. That guy was 
shafted with the spiral stuff. Input lag, input lag, guys, input lag, don't worry. Um, but yeah, Future Tense is the level name for anyone that uh, doesn't know, but if you're looking at the title of this video, you clearly already know it is Future Tense. Now let's hope that uh, in the next clip, maybe he gets past. But yeah, obviously always opening up with the, the fire, like laser sort of beams there. That, that's a classic uh, future trope. Yeah, music is what appears to be the exact same, which I think is okay. Um, I would uh, definitely not turn down another track, but yeah. Now, I don't know what this means for the Crash Bandicoot VR rumors that I've been hearing about, which I don't know, maybe, I swear I saw it on Twitter, if anything. Um, I would not be as much of a fan of a strictly virtual reality game as I would be for, uh, you know, like, like a new mainline sort of game, mainly because I don't want Crash Bandicoot to be another testing ground series again, you know, just because they made the money from him. So I want to see more stuff like this. I want to see new levels. You know, I want to see new themes. I want to see new ideas. You know, Crash is such a classic concept, but it's not like Crash, and it was the only innovator of, uh, please do the slide jump. Yes. There you go. It's not like Crash is the only innovator of, um, of, uh, what's the, what's the word? Um, like platforming there's so many platforming elements that that he can he, you know that we can add into these games like look, look those sort of spinny things are um you know well like as yeah that's it's, i mean those they're kind of they're kind of in um you know they're, they're very similar things are in stormy ascent slash uh, slippery climb but these are different and i think there's like it's like meant to be water in there i don't know how the uh i'm not sure about how the law of all this works but uh this is some kind of clearly superior hydro energy which i'm a big fan of um, I know that my good friend Zindictive Tainment is going to really struggle through the uh, time trial. I think he, he's going to go for Platinum, I know that. I know I probably won't even make the attempt because I'm an idiot. Um, I like how the camera sort of switched up as well. It looks like they've implemented some new things as well. Like they're, try they're trying to like, yeah, change things up and, and um, yeah, yeah. Very interesting interesting choice to make it at, uh, at night. I mean, at daytime, sorry. Yeah, at night, it's, it's not, it's day. Yeah, it's day. Okay. Must resist temptation to make uh, Kid Cudi, Kid Cootie remix. I don't know. I always say Kid Cudi and then I say Kid Cootie and then I say both and then I'm just like, whatever. Anyway, let's have a look at the clip a little bit uh, slower for... Oh, actually, actually, sorry. Let's get the trailer up. Let's get the trailer up. Starting off with, of course, the new level. Very cool. Looks like Crash has like a weird shadow in him. Man, looking at this footage like this makes me wish that I could just output like my, my capture card at just absolutely full resolution because this is just gorgeous. Man, it almost looks like they've like sort of upgraded it a little bit i don't know i mean it's possible with the patch there is a patch coming well allegedly so yeah a new level a new damn level thank you thank you very much vicarious visions you glorious team you are the guys to lead crash into the new dominion speaking of dominion everyone go watch dominion new Japan. do it you will not regret it oh and there we go another way look guys it's it's easy money easy you know in the words of Pusha T easy money it is easy money to just continue to do something with this franchise so looking at the footage again a little bit slower this time the first thing to note is the new warp area which says clearly there's an elevator and there is two gems there are two gems not is there is not there are two gems two gems in the level so i'm guessing one kind of secret route type thing and then the other one i'm gonna guess is uh, you know obviously well no i'm, I'm not guessing clearly clearly it is the the, the, the actual the box gem god that's, that's what happens when i i don't know um so yeah I'm, I'm like i'm trying to like scour through the environment for, to look for differences and stuff like that structurally there are some differences yeah it's not exactly it's not identical to every other other level and that's what i like now interestingly enough and here's another little little bit of a, a tidbit i guess is that um apparently actually um the Nintendo Switch version of this game, and this is sort of why they've done this, is my guess is that they're basically trying to promote the Switch version and the uh, Xbox and PC version. And so they thought, I think that the logic is, well, let's get people talking about this game one year later. You know, let's celebrate the fact that it's on another platform uh, or multiple platforms, which is huge for the series. This game is going to sell well for the Switch. I will bank money on it. If anyone wants to do a bet with me, I'm, I'm happy to uh, CS go lottery this shit because I really do think that, um, that we're, you know, they, we're go, you know, they're going to make they're going to make bank on this. Now, the interesting, so as I was saying, the interesting thing is that with the Switch port, um, 
yeah, they, they wanted to, you know, to promote it. But interestingly enough, the reason why it actually sort of started to get the ball rolling was because, and this was actually from a guy's video, which I will link to in the description. He was talking about this. What actually happened is um, he was wondering, you know, he's a big Switch fan, and he's wondering, would it be out of, be possible to get this game on the Switch, like to port it onto the Switch? So he took like a bunch of assets home and everything like that. He worked on it on the weekend, and then he actually uh, was able to get it working fairly competently, like the first level. And so then after that, I think, you know, obviously they would have had to go through a lot more channels and stuff like that, but that was the initial thing that got it all happening. So someone actually being able to prove that it can happen. Now Toys for Bob obviously are doing the port. So Toys for Bob keeping pretty busy with Reignited Trilogy and also the Switch version. The Switch version notably doesn't have fur on Crash's body, which is interesting. That's probably, you know, due to limitations and stuff like that. But really, I I don't really have a problem with that. If it gets it on the Switch, it's a good thing. I think that people have got to realize that it, it is actually, I think, a good thing to be seeing this game uh, on many platforms. Now, I can't wait for that section. And also, as someone else has pointed out, it's also very, very obvious that uh, no one's been able to get past a certain port point of this level or is that intentional? Are they trying to save, you know, the best till last? Because I've got a feeling that it's going to get really, really difficult, which I think is a, you know, is a, is a great idea, um, you know, to, to really challenge hardcore players because this is obviously going to be something cool for everyone to, um, you know, play it, like, you know, newbies and, and, and fans alike. But I think this is clearly aimed at a hardcore base and this is trying to placate them. I know some people, you know, maybe a little bit disappointed that this is all we've got for E3, but I think that... <laughs> I think that they're working on new crash. I would say that considering they're not doing the port, you got to think about that, right? Apart from obvious like uh, liaising with Toys of Bob about some stuff and everything, let's be honest, what else could they be working on? I mean, I know one of the teams was doing Destiny 2, but you know, like it's it's um, Destiny 2 is out now and stuff like that. So yeah, it's it's very much. Um, it's very much up in the air what Vicarious Visions are doing, um, but by up in the air, I don't think I don't think it should be too difficult to discern uh, what they're working on, and that is either, or either or both or whatever, Crash Team Racing remake, or uh, even uh, you know a, a new Crash, a, a theoretical Crash Four. I don't know what they'd call it. Maybe they'd call it a Race Against Time. Oh wait, no, that's Ratchet Five and Nintendo Sixty Four's fan game. Check it out. Um, yeah. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Love the water wheel. Look at the water wheel. Rest in peace, water wheel. Um, please uh, hashtag. Uh, we'll do, put the hashtag. Uh, make the remake the cavern level from the Crash One. And uh, no, I'll leave you. I'll leave you. I'll leave it with that, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support in E3 and everything like that, and my channel right now. Make sure if you if you haven't subbed, I never really ask people to sub, but if you haven't, you know, do it. Go do it. Go, go press that damn button, and we'll see what happens. Maybe you'll enjoy uh, me talking more. Thanks, guys. Bye.